Hi guys, welcome back to The Ratchet Christian. My name is Esmao and I am The Ratchet Christian. Guys, I miss you so much. I feel like I haven't done a video in forever, so I'm super stoked to be back. Thank you for joining me and I appreciate you being here as always. So today we are going to talk about demons, everybody's favorite topic. And I know like I've been posting some like pretty heavy stuff about, you know, like devils and demons and all that stuff on my page. I'm not trying to scare you guys. If anything, I'm just trying to strengthen that area of all of our lives. We may be ratchet Christians, but I feel like we should also be powerful Christians. You know, we should walk in authority and we should not be afraid of the kingdom of darkness because we should know that they're more afraid of us. And so I'm just, you know, wanting to strengthen us in that area. And I feel like the Lord's calling me to like, you know, um, just talk about these topics because these are things that I personally was once afraid of and had to like, you know, make sense of and deal with. And I just feel like it would be beneficial for you guys to be able to do the same. So bear with me as I go through the, the series because even next week I'm going to be talking about um, spiritual husbands and then the week after that I'm gonna be talking about um, the spirit of rejection then the week after that I'm gonna talk about spiritual warfare and then maybe after that we can get out of all of this dark stuff so um, just bear with me and I hope that you guys are learning a lot because God has all these blessings for us and a lot of us are like where are my blessings you know where are all the promises that God has made I'm not even seeing them come through in my life when nine out of ten times the enemy is in the way he's blocking our blessings so we need to learn how to rebuke him how to bind him and how to set ourselves free in certain areas so that we can go forth and receive those blessings that God has for us because it's not that they're there that they're not there but it's that you know there's spirits in the way so we just gonna come karate chop them boom and we gonna grab our stuff and run so today we are talking about demons what are demons ratchet christian tell me so according to biblestudytools.com demons are fallen angels who followed satan's rebellion from heaven and are organized under satan's under satan in hierarchical levels known as rulers authorities powers and spiritual forces of evil in Revelations chapter 12, verses 3 to 9, I just kind of summed it up. It says, An enormous red dragon, his tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. So a lot of people make the argument that, you know, one fourth, one third of the angels in heaven followed Satan down here on earth. So one third... Of the angels are down here as demons and um, as you can see in the scripture it says that he was hurled down from heaven to earth so Satan and his demons are among us they walk among us they are you know busy trying to trip us up busy trying to ruin our lives so we just have to be vigilant we have to be sober and we have to be ready on the defense at all times um, so I you know, I've been talking uh, about this topic with some friends of mine, you know, with some coworkers, just discussing it as I've been like studying it and getting ready for this video. And I have come across a lot of people who said they don't believe in demons or they don't believe in witchcraft or they don't believe in things like that. And I'm here to tell you not believing in demons is not an option. If you believe in God, if you say you, you believe in Jesus and you believe in the word of God, then belief in demons is part of it. Belief in the devil and his wiles and his schemes and his witchcraft is a part of it. You can't believe in the good things and I also believe in the bad things you know they coexist um, so like I just said believing in demons is not optional if you're a follower of Jesus Christ it's not an option they are real and you, you need to learn how to combat them um, plus throughout the Bible there's several scriptures where they are spoken of even Jesus talks about them a lot you know casting them out and stuff like that so that is a part of the Christian walk is dealing with demons and in Matthew chapter 8 verses 31 it says the demons beg Jesus if you drive us out send us into the herd of pigs another scripture Luke chapter 8 verses 30 says Jesus asked him what is your name legion he replied because many demons had gone into him another scripture first Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 the spirit clearly says that in later times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving doctrines taught by demons so that's just three scriptures that um, addresses demons but there's way more in the Bible the Bible talks about it a lot so they are real whether you believe in them or not they believe in you and they are out there harassing you um so I'm I think I've like cited this book before but it's a really really good book i don't know if you can see it's called pigs in the parlor i recommend that you read it it's amazing it may be a bit kind of like scary at first but you will literally learn so much i learned so much from this book so we're gonna read a, um, an excerpt from this in page 19. so page 19 says there is no advantage to us 
in ignoring Satan's forces and methods. This only permits, permits Satan to work undetected and unchallenged. To fail to become actively involved in spiritual warfare is to suggest that we do not care about what becomes of ourselves, our loved ones, our community, or our nation and our world. Most Christians have not become engaged in spiritual battle because they have never been taught the importance of it, nor the way to go about it. Today, Satan is flaunting his power through spirit spiritism, occultism, false religions, and cults as never before in all human history. The church is becoming forced, I mean, the church is being forced to re-examine its own resources. So this is just addressing what I was just saying, like, a lot of people don't engage with the spirit of dark, um, with the uh, spirits of darkness, and you shouldn't if you don't have to. But it's like if you're going under, you know, spiritual warfare, you can't just pretend like you know these things aren't happening. You need to address them. You need to um, bring those issues to light. You you're not gonna you know win by pretending like those things don't exist. If anything, they're just winning because they're allowed to operate in your life uninterrupted, and that's not gonna work in my life. Me and Satan, we and his demons, we fight. Listen, we wrestle. You're not gonna get away with certain things in my life because I'm gonna cast you out, I'm gonna lose you, I'm gonna bind you, and it's gonna be a problem. So, how do demons operate? So now that we know what it, what they are and that they are real, how do they operate? How do they work? And um, first, we just need to know that they're very subtle, sub subtle, you guys, I can't say that word, subtle, you know what I mean. They're very subtle, haha, <laughs> I said it right, subtle, they're liars, and they do those little whispers, you know, a lot of, we always see that caricature of the angel on one shoulder and then the demon on another shoulder, and it's like, that's very true. At any given time, we have three, three voices in our head. We have our own voice, we have the voice of God, and then we have the voice of Satan and his demons. So the voice of God is always calling us to do the right thing. And then there's the voice of demons that are always calling us to do the bad thing, you know, the thing that we know that we shouldn't do. And so there, you may think like that's your own original thought, but you have to really think, it's like, well, I wouldn't think something like that, so what's this coming from? You know, um, uh, one time like God had like, you know, in my spirit told me like, oh, give one of your sisters like this amount of money. I'm like, Lord, that's a lot of money. I don't want to give that much money. And it's like, I knew that that wasn't my own voice telling me to give that much money because me personally, I didn't want to, but I'm like, God, you're calling me to do something like so generous, so nice. I know that's coming of you, you know, and there's other times where I, I'll get a feeling like, you know, I just really want to cuss this person out. But I'm like, Lord, you wouldn't be telling me to cuss somebody out. And me personally, I'm working on not cursing people out. So who's this telling me to cuss this certain person out? I'm like, oh, it must be Satan. Go have a seat. I'm not doing that. So you have to always do a process of, of elimination. Like, who's telling me these things? Like, I remember I was sitting one day in my car and I just got like this epiphany that the Lord gave me. And I was just like, wow, it just really blew my mind. Because I'm like, you know what? Like, I wouldn't say that it's like, of, of course, maybe sometimes I've like maybe battled with like low self-esteem, battled with like low confidence and stuff like that. And then the Lord told me, it was like, it's because you've been, been believing in Satan's lies. You've been thinking it's your own thoughts and it's not. And it's like, I think I'm attractive, you know? So what's this voice telling me that I, I'm not attractive? I'm not this, I'm not that. And I just realized, I'm like, that's not how I feel about myself. That's how Satan feels about me. And that's what he's whispering in my ear. And all along, I've been believing it, thinking that it was my own original thoughts. I think I'm a snack, okay? So when I hear that little voice, that's like, your hair looks stupid like that. I'm like, Satan, you look stupid like that. You need to have a seat. So it's like, when you learn how to do that process of elimination, in your head you can better just just better fight for yourself you know talk back to those little voices that's voices like that person thinks you're stupid it's like well that's not true and i know that's not from god so satan you can have a seat or your mom is a bad person this and this and that and it's like well no that's not true because that's not how god feels about my mom so once you start doing that process of elimination you can talk back to, to those spirits and tell them where they can go now let me move on so they're, they're, they work by those little whispers and they're very organized, very, very organized. The kingdom of darkness, like that uh, quote said, they are organized in um, principalities, min municipalities, like it, Satan is very, very organized. They take their time, they study you, they know what it is that you like, what you don't like. The devil's never gonna tempt you with the stuff that you don't want. If you don't smoke cigarettes, he's not gonna come tempt you with cigarettes. If you're not into tall uh, blondes or whatever, he's not gonna come, you know, tempt you with a tall blonde once you get married. He knows what you like, he knows what you're into. So you just have to be vigilant. When you come across something you're being tempted, just know that you're being tempted by him. You're not being tempted by God. Um, also, demons need sin to operate. They need legal entry. 
they need your agreement. So the Bible, what people don't realize, it's a law book. It's a book full of laws and rules for the spiritual realm. And they know that book better than we do, in and out, back and forth. That's why we as believers, we should know the Bible, we should read the Bible for ourselves. We shouldn't just be satisfied with going to church, sitting down, hearing what the pastor says, and then that's it. You need something that's gonna carry you through the rest of the week. Me, I read the Bible, I know the things that the Bible says. So when I hear something come across my mind that's opposite of the word of God, I know that's not from God. And I know that that's Satan and whatever it is that he's trying to do and I can rebuke him. So it's like, you need to know the spiritual laws because they know spiritual laws and it's like in order for spirits to come operate in your life you need to be breaking those spiritual laws and it's like they need sin there's this verse that says um which verse i think it's like up here okay i'm gonna get to it da, da, da. okay well in ephesians it says ephesians chapter 4 verses 27 it says do not give the devil an opportunity to work and um where is it where is it Proverbs 26 verse 6, I mean 26 verse 2 says, like a fluttering sparrow or a darting swallow, an undeserved curse does not come to rest. So if somebody can be up all day and night putting curses on you, but if you don't if you don't have an open avenue, an open entryway of sin for demons to come in, that curse cannot come across come upon you so it's like you have to close all the entry points sin in your life is like a legal entry point for the devil and his demons to come and operate if you are you know involved in like occultism you're getting tarot cards you're going to go seek sidekicks you're even fornication adultery um gluttony envy all these like little sins that you have in your life is an entry point for the enemy to come and legally disturb you. They're not breaking any laws because you're dealing with their stuff. If you're meddling in the kingdom of darkness, you're messing with their stuff, they have legal right to come and harass you. And God is not going to rebuke them. You have to close those entry points in your life in order for them to leave and cast them out. I was dealing with like, um, you know, things from the marine spirits, but I realized they had legal entry in my life because I was still in fornication. So what I did was I prayed and asked God to help me deal with that fornication in my life and close that door. And so those spirits had to go. And then you have to stand guard in that door because they will try to come back. Like you are gonna have to cast demons out all the time because they are going to try to come back. Um, according to BibleKnowledge.com, common entryways are direct and willful sin. The occult, dealing with Ouija boards, dealing with Charlie Charlie, all these stuff like that. They may seem harmless, but they're not. Dealing with the occult, um, they may come through generational curses, um, having unforgiveness in your heart, being through some type of trauma, whether if you were like uh, assaulted or if you were like robbed at gunpoint, just any traumatic experience that you've been through, demons can come through that. It can come through abuse, whether you're abused by a child, abused by a spouse, um, ungodly soul ties, that one person that you're obsessed with and I told you to let go of like six months ago, you still talking to them. That's an open door for them. Um, whether it's through curses, addictions, fears, and phobias, there's no reason why you should be afraid to go outside. Girl, that's a demon. There's no reason why you should be afraid to be around people. That's a demon, and you're going to have to cast that out. Um, they come through false religions, Scientology, everybody, y'all out there burning sage, doing all that stuff that you don't know nothing about. You're messing with his stuff. Um, cursed objects that you may bring into your home. Y'all bringing Buddha statues in your home and a bunch of other stuff that you have no business bringing in your home. Um, cursed buildings. We all know that of haunted places, places can be haunted. And um, yeah, so if you're dealing with those things, if you have an open, those are like open avenues in your life that spirits can get in legally. They're allowed to be there. So it's like you have to, that's why it's so important to go back and you know address the areas of abuse and the hurt and the hurt in your life address the unforgiveness in your life because as long as you have those doors open demons can come and legally stay so if you've been through abuse if you've been traumatized go seek therapy get healing in that area pray to god about it you know take it to jesus actively be trying to heal that area of your life so that you can close that wound because it's just an open gaping wound it's like a cesspool for bad spirits to come in and hang out there if you have unforgiveness with somebody if you're in unforgiveness with yourself you need to forgive yourself you have to you know be proactive in dealing with uh fears and anxiety and like you know phobias and stuff you have to you know surround yourself with good christian people that that can minister you minister to you in that area and even seek therapy if you need to so that you can heal um so yeah basically it's like Ephesians said when it says do not give opportunity to the devil it's like he needs the opportunity in order to come in he can't just jump up on you but if you're doing something if you're dealing with this stuff then he's gonna come on you because 
he has the legal right to. Um, and there's a difference between um, demonic oppression and possession. Possession possession is when you're just fully head turned and eyes in the back of your head. The demon has full control of you. But a majority of us are walking around demonically oppressed. That's where we're getting the depression. That's where we're getting the anxiety. That's where we're getting the low self-esteem. Oh, I think I need to, you know, go buy new boobs or this and that. Like that's not of God and that's not even of you. That's that little voice in the back of your head that's telling you, oh, you should be anxious about that or you should be, you know, be depressed about that. Think about this 24 hours a day. It's like, that's not of God. That's a spirit and you have to call it out by name and tell it to go. Um, uh, things that we think are personality types. Okay. Yeah. So there's a difference between possession and oppression and things that we think are personality types are actually evil spirits like there's people like well I'm just a petty person I just naturally have a bad attitude I just naturally have a bad mouth no you have an evil spirit that's operating in you you know you may think that you're just a petty person but you might just be a person who's easily demonically influenced and so that spirit may be coming through you to go ruin somebody else's day you might be somebody who doesn't have control over their mouth and it just has you know um, that petty spirit operating in them. So you're like, oh, I'm about to go on Asmao's page and I'm gonna talk about her. That's not you um, wanting to talk about me or talk about anybody else. You're letting yourself be used by spirit and you shouldn't be doing that. You need to close those avenues. And there's actually a bunch of personality types that people think, there's personality traits that people think are traits but actually are evil spirits. And you can find those in this book. It has a list of them and I'm gonna read some to you. So in page 129, if I can find it very quick, haha, <laughs> I found it. So, common demon groupings, you see there's a bunch of them, are intolerance, resentment, criticism, false responsibility, false compassion, sorrow, heartache, crying, sadness, cruelty, tiredness, weir uh, weariness, laziness is a spirit. Um, let's see, shame is a spirit, unworthiness, embarrassment, condemnation. Um, gluttony, nervousness, compulsive eating. You just no way you should be sitting around eating 20 donuts at a time. That's that's not normal. That's not natural. Even that can be a spirit. Um, mm, 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 mm. There's more anger, self will, criticism. If you're always criticizing people, that's a spirit behind you using you to cut down other people. Envy, suspicion, distrust, selfishness. I was one of the most selfish people, and you could not tell me that I was not. But when Jesus really came into my heart, when I really took my walk with Jesus series, God addressed that area of my life like, you need to deal with this. And I've been actively working on it. You know, I've kicked that spirit out, and it will try to enter, but it's like tithing is what has helped me to keep that selfishness spirit at bay. I make sure I'm constantly giving so that that spirit of selfishness has no room to come and rest on me. Um, insanity, madness, mania, jealousy, persecution, distrust, fears, and the list goes on and on and on. So, just re I recommend you read this book so that you can know um, more of them. But we're going to move on. So, just to wrap it up, Ratchet Christian, what can I do to protect myself? You told me that there's all these bad, scary spirits out there. What is the girl supposed to do? Well, the first thing you're supposed to do is confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You need to get saved. The very first thing you can do is get saved. The only name that demons respect is the name of Jesus. The only thing that they respect is the blood of Jesus. You can't be a Muslim going up against demons because they don't respect Muhammad. You can't be a Hindu or Buddhist going up against demons because they don't respect that name. They only bow down to the name of Jesus. So first, you need to be covered by the blood of Jesus. You need to have that hedge of protection around you. And if you're not, I don't recommend you casting out demons. I don't recommend you going up against these bad spirits because you're going to get your butt Whipped because they don't respect anything outside of the name of Jesus. So on page 16, let's go back to that real quick. On page 16, it says, if I can find it, yes. We today have the same authority and power for ministry that was given to the church initially. It would be sheer folly to go against demon spirits without this power and authority. The authority comes through salvation, getting saved. The power comes through the baptism in the Holy Spirit, believing in the Holy Spirit, receiving him. Then the power given the believer through the mighty baptism in the Holy Spirit is evidenced through the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit, such as supernatural words of knowledge and discerning of spirits, are indispensable in spiritual warfare. This power and the authority of Jesus' name are given that the believer might overcome demon power. So, you need authority, you need power, and that only comes through believing in Jesus Christ and following his teachings. 
and to not have those and try to go up against demons you won't have a problem do not do that because you will not be safe okay and then uh, point number two and what I can do to protect myself close all legal entry points you know when you're really serious when you really want peace in your life you will close all those legal entry points you know the Bible it's not a sin to drink but it is a sin to to be drunk drunkenness is a sin that's why I stopped drinking you know I used to love to drink I'm like I'm a party girl we're gonna have a good time but I realized I'd be doing all this work on myself have one night of drunkenness and just you know make and just go 10 steps back into my progress, you know, and I just wanted to keep making forward progress. So it's like close all legal entry points. If you have any addictions, if you're still in fornication and you're not feeling convicted about it, but you think that it's okay to be, you know, having sex outside of marriage, that's a legal entry point. You can continue to do that, but just know that demons are going to continue to harass you in that area and other areas of your life. So, um, that, you know, if, if you're lying, you're stealing, you're scamming, you're all these things, any area of sin, I know that we're not perfect, we're all going to fight short, but you, you need to be actively trying to close those doors. If you seriously, seriously want Jesus, if you seriously, seriously want peace. Um, so close the entry points, and then number three, plead the blood of Jesus. So it's like, I just realized, not realized, but I'm just newly learning the power of the blood of Jesus, you know? So I plead the blood of Jesus over my life, I plead the blood of Jesus over my finances, over my home, over my neighborhood, over my car i will plead the blood of jesus because it's like the jesus the blood of, the blood of jesus is almost like a hedge of protection when you plead the blood of jesus of stuff and the spiritual realm is like it's like a no-go zone for demons like oh the blood of jesus is on that i can't touch it the blood of jesus is on her life i can't touch it jesus died and he sacrificed his life for us so that we may have power and so that we may have authority and we have it through his blood so plead the blood of jesus over your children plead it over your marriage plead it over your friends plead it over your health and your life because that's a no-go zone like you cannot cross this point if you see the blood of jesus demons you need to turn around and walk the other way you can't come near me so plead the blood of jesus and then number four um you may have to fast and pray. There are certain, in the Bible it says, there are certain spirits that go without not, except through fasting and prayer. So if you're dealing with the spirit that, you know, is not going away, say you're really trying to battle the spirit of depression over you, you might have to fast and let the Lord lead you in how many days you may need to fast. But it's like, so fast and then find relevant scriptures to where it is that you're going through. Like if you're going through a tough time financially, you may need to fast and um, find scriptures about God's provision. I had to do that before because I know that there was a spirit of poverty over my family you know I come from two families that you know have struggled a lot when it came to money and I just have declared it that in my life that stops at me my children will not have to know what poverty is or their children or their children after that that generational curse stops at me and I had to fast and break that off of my family and I believe in Jesus name that it has been broken but I have to continue continually renew my mind in that area continually battle that spirit and I had to fast and find scriptures on God's provision on God um, increasing me on God enlarging my territory so certain spirits if you're having a hard time with fast and pray them away and number five resist the devil when he tries to come back you know there's a scripture that says excuse me resist the enemy and he shall flee from you a lot of us we don't resist at all if he says hey you should go smoke a blunt nobody you don't say back well no i shouldn't because i'm trying to stop like there's plenty of times i'm around people who are drinking all the time and i used to love to drink it's not that it's easy so when the enemy is just telling me oh take one shot it's not going to be that bad i'm like saying you can have a seat because i'm working on a few things and i know that's not of god so resist him that doesn't mean that those feelings are going to come upon you yes i stopped having sex before marriage but i'm a human being it doesn't mean i don't want to have sex but it's like i just resist i wait and i wait on the word of god and i rely on the word of god and i just resist the enemy he comes in all the time trying to tempt me and he will come back and try to tempt you but you resist and maybe sometimes you fall but you get back up and you keep moving forward um and then number six is guard your eyes and your heart so be mindful of the things that you're letting your eyes rest on that explore page on instagram is a setup because i have to sometimes guard my heart by the time i get off of there i'll be feeling like a bald-headed chicken with no booty because all you see is all this like long weave big butts and big boobs i'm like i'm just not enough i'm inadequate but it's like you have to guard your heart because satan is always coming to try to plant thoughts in your head coming to try to steal something from you whether it be your self-esteem whether it may be your love for jesus whether it may be your pride you have to guard the things that you let your ears listen to if you're listening to songs that make you want to you know be lustful you need to turn that off if you're watching stuff that make you want to do lustful things you need to turn that off so you have to guard the things that you're letting into your space as well as the people that you're letting into your space as well and um number seven last but not least is do not be afraid fear is an evil spirit <laughs> 
excuse me, I always hear people say, oh, you should use your fear and motivate you. I'm not using fear to do nothing because in the Bible it says that God did not give us a spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. It just comes up on you. It's an evil spirit. So you need to rebuke fear and renounce it and cast it back down into the kingdom of darkness where it belongs. Fear does not belong anywhere near you if you're a believer. The enemy is afraid of you. He's afraid of you having power because you have authority. He's already been destroyed and um, God has given us power to like tread over him. And so, uh, um, yes, so in Luke chapter 10, verses 17, verse 19, as page 16 in this book, it has it here, so I didn't have to go like look for it in the Bible. It says, And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And that was Luke chapter 10, verses 17 through 19. And that scripture has always stuck with me. Because like I said, I, I used to always be terrified of these types of conversations. I did not used to like to talk about demons and devils and all that stuff. But it's like I realized if I want to be, you know, um, triumphant in my walk as a Christian, I have to be well versed in these areas and so do you. And as you're going through through, you know, knowledge about this, do not be afraid, do not be scared. Cause Jesus said, I was there when the Satan got cast out of heaven. I saw God throw him down like a piece of lightning onto the earth. And I have given you my power to tread of all to tread over all of his serpents and scorpions. So do not be afraid. And that scripture has always encouraged me because there are times where the enemy may try to intimidate me or don't talk about this, don't talk about that, you know but I realize he's more afraid of me as a Christian with authority than I ever will be of him. So I just want to encourage you guys in that area. Um, I'll link, I'm not sure which videos I want to link, but it's like I'll link some videos that I have been watching that talk more about this um, in the description of the video. And I'll also leave the scriptures that I used. So guys, I appreciate you for coming back. Back. I am so excited that we're just getting to be strong ratchet Christians that who are that who are that are living for Jesus and are living boldly and that we're just well rounded all together in our walks with Christ. I hope that made sense. But either way, guys, thanks for coming back. I appreciate you and I will see you next week when we talk about more cool stuff. I just pray for you guys. I pray I had your protection around you guys' lives and I just pray that this is ministered onto you in your spirit. I pray that you learn something and I pray that you'll close those entry doors that you may have in your life so that you may have peace and be safe. All right, guys, have a blessed week. I will talk to you later. Bye.